So this is the first 90 motorcycle in my review. This is the version Scrambler, so let's find out how it is. BMW R90 Scrambler is a cheaper version of the 90, the classic, you know, very nice motorcycle. It will save about 2.5 thousand euros, depends on your market. If you, if you buy this one and you will get a cheaper suspension, classic telescopic fork, 43 millimeters and cheaper uh, rear shock, you will get a uh, steel instead of aluminum uh, tank and you will get a little cheaper version of Brembo brakes, still very good. Uh, you know, three parts instead of four parts frame, which is lighter a little bit, that, that's, that's maybe an, an advantage. And you will get a motorcycle which is a little bit more capable in off-road, but still definitely not an off-roader. And the motorcycle which is higher, 80, uh, 820 millimeter seat height, it's something which I can operate already because the original 90, it's I think too small for me, 193 centimeters, you know. This here, I feel great. So this is 1200 cc it's uh, it comes it's coming from the uh, bmw r uh, 12 G, 1200 gs of course uh together with the um, uh, this bike is from the model 2010 to 2013 so it's the last model before the you know liquid cooled came on the on the scene uh, so it's still oil and water oil and uh, air cooled it has 81 kilowatts and uh, in about 7750 rpm and 116 newton meters in about 6,000 RPM. So the engine is still over squared, of course, and it, the best it has between 6,000 to 8,000 RPM. It's very fun to ride it. It's kind of vibration less and the gyroscopic effect is not that big. I can show you. It does something, but it's not, it's not like Moto Guzzi or the older BMWs. Also the shaking with, with in the start, some, some kind of, but I would, I would even like to have it a little bit more, you know, the character. Uh, one thing which I didn't tell you is that if you buy the Scrambler, one very good thing is that you will get Akrapovic as the standard with a nice sound. And these two pipes, like from the design point of view, they look amazing. So from the comfort point of view, I told you like 820 millimeters seat height means that suddenly I can operate this bike, I can ride it and I feel nice on it. I like the higher position of the handlebar together with amazing mirrors. I don't like, we don't have the taco here and the gear indicator, but uh, the philosophy of the motorcycle is just different. And it's just about riding and sound and engine. And okay, I can live with it. Ah, bikes. Yeah, so, uh, this is unfortunately the style of riding in the Czech Republic sometimes in the villages and so this wasn't a good example. We ride safe and slow. So I'm now sitting on the R90 Scrambler and uh, <laughs> it's very, it's, it's a big pleasure. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the engine emotions kind of, you know, when you start it, uh, it shakes just a little bit, a little bit, yes, but uh, it's not definitely like on the older, like our uh, GS1000, you know, 11, 1150 or or on the even older ones of course this is kind of a very modern unit from 2010 to 2013 bmw uh, r12 1200 gs also the vibrations and you feel a little bit in the seat but uh not much in the same with the gyroscopic effect which again is is, is, is a small one it's way smaller than on the moto Guzzi, so i tested and I kind of, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the fan of the old fashion bikes and uh, which has their own head and all their, you know, kind of, I don't know, their wildness and, and unpredict, you know, that th th sometimes was unpredictable a little bit. And this is a very exact and modern engine. And uh, also, you know, in terms of sound, the sound is kind of uh, very similar to me, to BMW F800GS, which I owned for a year. Uh, this one is a little bit more, mm, I don't know how to explain a little bit, but you know, here for yourself. It 
relatively not something you know you would expect from the 1200 cc like a you know uh two 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 cylinder engine but uh uh, two pipes or you know two mufflers then I would expect a little bit more but uh, but it's actually very nice in terms of uh, comfort and everything behind you know everything like that it's like I have 193 centimeters and this bike is a little bit higher than the 90 and I feel nice on it it's definitely true because the 90 is too small for me like as, at least my first experience was like that and uh, here it works nice uh, now we will get to the engine and, and corners, which is a very important topic. Uh, <laughs> so, the engine is 1200 over squared uh, boxer, which is a pleasure to ride. It's always great because you just know, you know, it's very nice to look at the engine from the third person view, but also from the point of view of the rider. It's always there, it's very nice. Very special thing on these bikes. As you, you, if you are the BMW user or you know the Boxer engine motorcycles, they have one special skill or an ability and it's to ride in corners. So the leaning angles, it's very, very easier to change the direction and hold you know, the trajectory uh, in, the, in the corner, in the twisty roads. And I think even for beginners, like if you, if you take a beginner and put it on the, I don't know, Fireblade or R6 Yamaha and this boxer, I think in all cases he will be faster on the boxer because, I don't know, the feeling because of the mass uh, of center of gravity, it's just, it gives you such a confidence in the corners, which is unbelievable. So I don't think you are faster in absolute numbers like two skilled pilots, but uh, like intermediate or less experienced people will be always faster on the boxers, I think, in the corners and way more confident. So that's a special skill. Also, the engine, uh, I have to say, like uh, from the feeling point of view, you would say it's it's not 81 kilowatts. You would say probably it's, it's weaker if you don't see the paper and specifications. Um, but that's just the feeling, you know, because in absolute numbers, it's actually really really fast um, in terms of acceleration elasticity uh, maybe in the top speed I did I, I did like 200 kilometers per hour maximum but uh, but let's put it this way I tested yesterday the elasticity with Moto Morini Corsaro Veloce which is very special Italian motorcycle with uh, 1200 v, uh, cc v-twin and uh, this bike, like the Moto Morini, had 140 horsepower and uh, 123 newton meters of torque. It's a very wild motorcycle without any assistance. And surprisingly, on the sixth gear and fifth gear, from 100 or 110, the acceleration on the highway, uh, the BMW was always faster. And that's kind of, you know, a surprise for me. Uh, again, the corners, this is really cool. You have the feeling really that you would scratch, you know, the uh, cylinder head covers, but hopefully I will not. <laughs> so corners and uh, speed of the engine is amazing. Uh, now here is the cheaper suspension, as I told you. So here are uh, here is like more very basic, basically telescopic fork, 43 millimeters in the front, uh, and. Uh, that's kind of, uh, you know, uh, together with the cheaper uh, cheaper shock on the BMW Paralever, uh, Paralever shock, uh, you know, system in the, in the rear. And uh, first of all, it's way more stiff, uh, way more sporty and uh, less comfortable, definitely, than the 90. Um, it's very good when you have a good tarmac, but the ones you don't, uh, it's not really pleasant ride. I mean, you can you can do it, and and depends on the on your weight, of course. But um, but yeah, but here you feel that and less stability in the corners once the tarmac went, you know, better better you know bad quality. So that's that's kind of a thing. Um, but it's not that bad, you know. Like when I see it on the paper again, uh, I would say it's uh, the downgrade would be feel felt, you know, like you would feel it more. But uh, it's not that bad. 
uh, in terms of brakes, again, there is a kind of a downgrade. Like there are still Brembo's, and there are, uh, but there are little cheaper version. But uh, they do a great job. I can show you. I'm, I'm going 60. Let's go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I didn't stop to you know I didn't stop, but uh, I want to demonstrate from 60 to 20, uh, almost stopping the bike and. Um, it, it's very nice. It gives you, I mean, first of all, ABS gives you a lot of signals because they, they and it, 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 it just uh, reacts uh, in the least possible, uh, you know, moment when it gets really to the extreme, like when it gets, you know, when it's happening some, something. So it allows to stop the, the wheels for, for uh, you know, millisecond. So this is, uh, this is something I, I appreciate. And you can turn off the ABS if you don't like it. And that's nice. Um, but the brakes over really are great, at, at least what I tried at one person in, in many different kind of speed. So brakes are good, suspension I told you, uh, the overall comfort is okay, uh, I enjoy it, I'm always happy to see, you know, uh, the engine, engine behind me or beneath me, it's always <laughs> very good and uh, it's something I would like to own because like uh, if I ride the three, three cylinder engine I, d I don't see anything when I ride. This is very interesting feeling. Uh, also, in terms of uh, uh, mirrors, there are very good, no vibrations, almost. Uh, I mean, there are some, you know, slight vibrations, the small ones, but you still feel, uh, you still see clearly what's behind you. This is very good, and they have, they are very high and good, good position. Um, adjustable levers, so that's good. Uh, I didn't adjust it, but it's, it's nice to have, and. Um, uh, the clutch, uh, it's hydraulically, you know, uh, it's a hydraulic clutch basically, and uh, and it, it's very lightweight, like it's very easy to operate the clutch, this is nice. Um, gearbox, no problem at all, very modern kind of feeling, and uh, from this point of view, no problem at all. At all. <laughs> Let's go! What I don't like uh, personally is that I don't have a taco. So I don't know, you know, what kind of RPM I I have at, at the moment. So I actually don't know. Like, it, you know, this this engine has everything uh, from, you know, the, the best it has from 6,000 RPM to about 8,000. But I don't know usually at all which kind of section I'm riding right now. And I don't even know the gear, uh, the current gear, which I would like to see. But unfortunately, there is no gear indicator. Uh, maybe it's the whole philosophy of the scrambler, which I understand as something you don't need to really think about anything about full maps about traction control settings anything even about RPMs or gear you just you know you just put out you know you just turn on the engine and go and uh, and enjoy the ride forget the technologies and that's nice kind of you know like the, it's it's this is not the cheap motorcycle and it's it's still a little bit you know fashion product but it's very easy to ride. It's easy to, uh, yeah, it's, it's easy to use it, even for beginners. And you will forget, you know, probably all the technologies you will have in your life. Uh, and because you don't have any uh, TFT displays and Bluetooth and I don't know, whatever. So that's nice. But me personally, I wouldn't, I wouldn't find, you know, I wouldn't feel very comfortable to riding in this one off-road and I would always take, I don't know, Honda CRF Rally or any other Enduro and enjoy it more. And uh, and uh, I will tell you in, in some of my other videos what happened to my Triumph Scrambler when I when I saw all the market, marketing materials, you know, people riding it off-road like crazy and jumping with the bike. So I did, and uh, the bike is now not in very good condition. And I'll tell I will tell you <laughs> in some of my uh, other videos. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you like this test of BMW R90 Scrambler. It's a nice bike and um, I, I, I hope I will test the other version soon. Goodbye.